steady loan that can and shout out to Red Light Crew. Hey, you're one of 12 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. Yeah, you know what? To define that uh, uh, better, um, I think the key there is... Uh, I just lost my trend of thought. What's up, episode 137, Nation Real Life. We have a very full room. It's going to be hot and clammy in here by the end of this hour. Wanye, Jay, Bag Milk, Chalmers, I'm Tyler Uremchuk, and a very special guest. Uh, the people who are listening to this have probably heard his voice before. It needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyways. He's the voice of one of the best morning shows, the top morning show when you consider males 24 to 54 in the Edmonton area. He's the voice of the CFL on TSN. He's the voice of U Sports Canada West Football. He's the voice of the Alberta Golden Bears. My point being, he is a very popular voice, Dustin Nielsen. How's it going, Dusty? Good, buddy. I, I can't believe these people let you lead off the podcast. That's amazing. He's in charge. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. The one hand man. At the office, I just chirped you so hard all the time, and here you are, legitimate. I like it. It's a different yeah. world over yeah, at Oilers Nation, Dusty. This I carry is a, tech a little bit company. of power. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. It's different. You're right. Young kids in backwards hats rule the world over here. <laughs> oh, damn right. Um, but we're happy to have. Have you on, Mr. Nielsen? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. What are your thoughts about our podcasting setup? I just want to get it right out of the way because you've seen a lot. You're in the big leagues. You're doing CFL games. What are your thoughts of our infrastructure, dude? I I, I love it. This is the early stages of Facebook, right? And I I love that movie. That's I, I, I watch that movie all the time. It's weird because I don't know if you guys love that movie as much as I do. So no, this is this is bare bones, man. I, I like it. With whoa, 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 bare bones. We've got the well, roadcaster. I, 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 I was yeah. just pointing to it. The road podcaster. I got that in my basement too, and I bought it. And then when I bought it, I was just like, man, I don't even, I don't even know if I need this right now, but I bought it because it's awesome. So that's high level. I mean, that makes everything possible. So do yeah, we no, need, it's good. do we need more people in the room? No. Yeah. You know what? I think you could probably go two more. We had a uh, fantasy football draft in our station on, I don't know, sometime last week and we had eight guys in a room. And that was tough to manage. Like eight guys was a little ridiculous. It is a bit much. And our HVAC, we're, we're, we're going to get to the, how the HVAC affects you later on in the show. Because yeah. believe it or not, the little brick furnace is actually going to fuck with your life. <laughs> Chalmers just had to shut the window. We're talking about being clammy in here, your M check. And now there's like somebody outside drilling for oil or something. So it's going to get hot in here. But it is, it is like the Facebook movie. Granted, the, the, the company is 12 years old, which is slightly <laughs> embarrassing. We're still in startup mode. We might go startup mode right till the end. We might sell still in startup That's mode. That's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And just never have once got our shit together the whole time. <laughs> well, it keeps us in sweatpants yeah. where yeah. I am at my most comfortable. That's right. That's right. We are excited to have you here today because we're going to go through a couple of things. Number one, we want to talk a, a little bit about, I want to talk a little bit about, especially getting to know a little bit more about who you are. Okay. And when we have players on the show, we like to do a thing we call the climb. Okay. And the climb is starting out in minor hockey, working your way through, and then at what point do we understand that like your dreams of playing the NHL could become a reality? I think that's a really interesting thing because it's weird. It's in different points in people's careers. It's like, oh, I grew four inches in the summer and suddenly my coach was way nicer to me. Or, oh, I got scouted in one particular game. And I think in your career, you've hit the big time too. Right. And there's a lot of people who are in broadcasting school who are growing up and they want to be a sports broadcaster and they talk into their microphone in front of the mirror. But you've actually done it. Yeah, it was they can. And I've been here for 10 years now, so I I, had, I don't think back about that too often anymore. But I mean, my 20s, I grinded it out in broadcast like I went to I went to college in Lethbridge. Yeah. So what did you take there? What? Broadcast journalism. Okay. And when I graduated high school, like in the yearbook, it says Dustin wants to be on Hockey Night in Canada. Cool. So like, it was just, it was my goal from, from day one. So I, I, and actually, you know, what pissed me off was that I applied to get into the broadcast program the first year and I didn't get in. Damn it. And I was just like, what the hell? And now I look back at those guys and I was like, the joke's on you, you assholes. Like, how did I not, how did I not get in the first year? So I missed, so I didn't get in the first year. So I moved away anyway, cause I was already planning on going to Lethbridge with one of my buddies, killed time at the university. I got into the university of Lethbridge, which was fine, but I wanted to get in the broadcast program at the college. So I waited Got in the next year, did two years there, and then um, I did my, my, my teacher there, his name was Vero, and he, he told us straight up, he goes, take the first job you get, like just because you're not going to get many offers coming out of college, obviously. Um, so I got a job up in High Prairie. Have you, guys, okay. have you guys ever been up to High Prairie? It's Familiar like, with it. It's like on the road towards Grand Prairie. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's... Um, yeah, it's, my grandpa used to enjoy. We've talked about elderly people having coffee at A and W. Of course, OAC. they do have an A and W there. My grandpa every day yeah. have coffee and high. Oh, I remember my my grandpa and my dad driving me up. So I got offered like a morning news job at this station. So I was pretty pumped. I was like, "All right, cool." So my dad and my grandpa drive me up, 
And uh, my tire blew out on the way up, so we had to stop in Red Deer, get a new tire. I was driving a 1994 Taurus. Color? Uh, uh, gray. Mm. <laughs> and actually, that one ended up dying. I bought another Ford Taurus off my sister, same color, three years older. Ooh. It was like my go-to vehicle for a long time. But we, So I got up to High Prairie. And actually, I stopped in Barhead on the way up to High Prairie. You have to I, stop in Barhead. And I'm way. looking around Barhead, and nothing against Barhead, but it's kind of a shithole. Great golf course, though. Ah, I've heard it's a great golf course. Yes. I haven't played that course. Um, Got to stick the, up for Barhead. The yeah, person yeah. at the gas station in Barhead was like, so where are you going? I said, oh, I'm moving to High Prairie to work in radio. And they, like the person in Barhead looked at me and was like, Phew. You're Whoa. going to High Prairie? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is Barhead. What is High Prairie like? <laughs> so I went up to High Prairie and, um, and uh, you know what? It was, it was fine. It was small. My co-host, a uh, girl who I worked with, it was literally three of us at the radio station. It was the girl who hosted the morning show. I co-hosted with her, did news. And then there was like a sales and general manager. And that was it. Like our radio station was three people. So the rest of the day, there was no commentary? No, they would, like we'd go on to like 10 o'clock and then she'd flip a switch and it would take the feed from like here in Edmonton that they stream out to like all the small town AM stations all around everywhere. So I was there for like three, three and a half months. That was it. And it was, it was fine. I mean, I had a few stories out of High Prairie, but. What was the best story that came out of High Prairie in that three and a half month stint? Um, okay. okay well, the carnival came to town, you know, like when they, oh, yeah. like any sort of carnival rolls through. So me and my co-host, um, we ended up going out there she was a pretty cool chick. And, uh. We, we, we go and we're going to kind of take it easy, but then like 11 o'clock, we're sitting at the big hall party and this dude comes up to me and goes, Hey, my name's Steve. I'm a carny. Let's get drunk. And he sat down like a tray of beers. Yes. And I was just like, I, I'm in like, I was like 20, <laughs> this is why I got 20, in the news to begin with. I might have been like 23, 24. So we just start pounding these beers. And the next thing I know, my phone's ringing. I'm laying in the bathroom on the floor next to the toilet. And my co-host, she's like, she goes, get up. You're on the air with news in 10 minutes. And I was just, so I get up, I'm, I'm still hung I might've still been drunk. And I, uh, I lived like six blocks from the radio station. So I put on rollerblades. I used to rollerblade all over high prayer. So I rollerblade as fast as I can to the station, roll in, sit down. And just as I sat down, the new sounder came on and I had nothing ready. So she just kind of skips over. She comes over to me. She goes, you reek like booze. You have to go home and shower. And I was just like, okay, I'll go, I'll go. Home. People can't smell over the radio. No, you wouldn't think. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, she had to work with me all morning, but yeah, it wasn't. Of course, I smell like booze. I'm carny drunk. Yeah, right. yeah. And the other story, I had a hyper. We like the sales manager. Like, I'm there for four days, and she's like, oh, everybody's gonna come over. We're gonna have everybody over. We're gonna have dinner at the house and everything. And I was like, okay. So we go, and she lived in this this trailer, which is fine. I grew up in a double wide trailer on a farm, so I sit down, and. Um, like, she's like, okay, everybody come to the table. And I was like, oh, dinner time. So we sit down. There's like me, her, the dude she's living with, my co-host, and her two kids who are like 12 and 14. And they just fire up a couple of joints and start passing it around. And I I'd never smoked weed in my life. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, High this kid's 12 level. years old. Like, it was it was wild, a 12 man. 12-year-old so, blazing? I swear to God. High Prairie, Alberta. Oh, High Prairie. Was, Sorry. Hi, High it Prairie. Was, it was wild, man. So I was, just, so I was there for three and a half months. And then... Uh, then I came here for a bit to work with like John Short and Gregor on uh, AnySportAnyTime.com. So oh, yeah. yeah, that was just to do. What year was that in? Um, probably like 2004, so 2005. you were recruited directly from there to. Yeah, yeah, like Rob Kerr left to go down to Calgary. Yeah. And then like everybody kind of moved up a level and they needed a guy to just do play-by-play on the internet for like ACAC and AJHL games and stuff. Um. And I'd done some volunteering for them when I was in college, kind of met them through there. So I applied and um, yeah, they hired me. So I moved down here and I call games in the evening. And then in the morning I worked at Save on Foods and Produce just to make money. So, And this was young Jason Greger. Yeah, it was... Uh, Six it, different earrings, Jason Greger. Oh. When I first came, Greger was doing the night show at CJCA or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Gridiron yeah. Show. Yeah, the Gridiron Show. That was a thing. People want to talk about your broadcasting career, but you loved working in produce. Dude, I love produce. You love like, vegetables? If I was to get fight, if I, no, I hate he vegetables. He hates vegetables. It's yeah. a very ironic that job when I'm there. Like, I don't eat many fruits or vegetables, but I loved putting them out on a shelf. It was great. I'm diabetic, but I work yeah. at the Snickers factory. I, I worked <laughs> at Safeway for five years, right? and the produce department was aspirational. Like, mm-hmm. though, like if yeah. you can get that gig, you're like, you've done some good shit and you are living the good I life. I did three years in high school. Wow. Not produce. And then when I went to Edmonton, I worked produce at the old uh, old Strathcona one, like between 
um, Calgary Trail and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Save on that. I, I yeah, worked I for like right three there. years as a courtesy clerk bagging groceries before I could even stock shelves. Like the hierarchy to get to produce. I'm astonished that you climbed the ladder See, like, so fast. You must have been pretty Listen shitty. Listen to Jay yeah. making it all about him, eh? <laughs> yeah, fucking right. <laughs> oh, I was making six. Here's the thing. I was. This is about me. I was making six fifty an hour. I would get one shift a week for six hours. Yeah. So do the math. And every week, I'd have to pay a nine dollar and fifty cent union fee. Union dues. I was getting checks every week. They paid <laughs> weekly. 19 bucks. I remember one time coming to visit you when you were working like late at night and then I was like outside. You're like, you can come in the store if you want. And I was like, for what? real? And I remember like walking down the aisle with me. He's just like, those are razor blades. I put those out. Those are dad's oral root cookies. Yeah. I put those out. I was I, like, this guy got it going on. I went in there one night and it's weird being in a grocery store. It's like you're the only person left on earth. Yeah. And like after hours, it's like if you could be locked in a store overnight, like obviously Walmart would be wicked, yeah. but like a grocery store would be pretty fucking I, sweet. I, I did it like um, the year after high school before I went to university. I was like the lead hand on the night shift at Savon and Cramer. This motherfucker got and, uh, promoted. Geez, you know, you know what's were crazy was that in the like, grocery world. That the, 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 I got Why would you there. give that up to be on the radio? Well, I was making 18 bucks an hour too. That's which, was, joke. which was insane. Wow. So once I got my first job in radio, I was like, wow, damn it. I should have stayed in grocery. <laughs> like, but yeah, no, it was sweet because I, I on breaks, I would just take like magazines and go upstairs and read them and then put them back and continue about my night. So yeah, it was good. I, I worked at Savon and Cranbrook, Edmonton, Lethbridge, I, it was like my fallback job forever. It was awesome. Damn, I loved and it. you were in the union. And I was in the union. So yeah, you just go to the place, guy. you'd snap your finger, the yeah. union had to come out. Didn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, it's union. So well, it was Tell easy. the story, Jay, when you quit and then you came back and they had to let you back. When I didn't quit, but quit? Yeah. I got a bartending gig over the summer. So I was living like the Billy Madison summer. So Fridays and Saturdays, I work at the bar and make a bunch of money and tips and then blow it all through the week golfing and just doing all that shit. But I also had my Safeway job. I'm like, nah, I don't got time for that shit. I got money to spend. <laughs> so I just stopped showing up. I stopped showing up for two months. But they kept scheduling me, kept scheduling me. And then sure shit, school's coming up, so I need a job because I can't do the bartending thing. I go back in and I'm like, I'm still on the schedule. <laughs> like, and, I'm like, and so I come in, I'm like, I'm gonna be here for my shift. So I show up, the manager comes up to me, he's like, do you promise you'll stay here now for good? I'm like, I've learned my lesson. I will stay. You George Costanza them. 100%. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> it was weird. I had a buddy one time. I used to work at Nevada Bob's growing up, which okay. was amazing. Nice. That's yeah, a good yeah, gig. Yeah. It was a little tiny ad in the newspaper looking for someone to work at a golf store. And I like assembled references, like a binder basically to go in there. I'm like, me, pick me. I want to be on the PGA one day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I remember when you had those jobs and you got your little pay, like my first paycheck, I, I faked my SIN number. I said, I, oh, I don't remember my last two digits because yeah. I didn't have one because I was 14. And my boss at the end of the first summer was like, okay, couple things. One, I don't know how old you are, but I know you don't have a SIN number. And two, <laughs> you got to get a SIN number. I worked my whole first summer for a golf bag and I thought <laughs> I was winning. And he's like, I don't know if we can do this, but like you'd get those checks four, five, six dollars an hour plus commission. And like, I literally did not know what I could do with all my money. I was like overwhelmed. I'm like, it was oh. ridiculous. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just going home being like, I suppose I could go to McDonald's if I wanted to, I could go right now. You have your own money. What could I do? Yeah. What could I do differently? Oh, it was good, man. First jobs yeah. though settle. It sets you on your road in life. Cause like if your first job is in an industry, there's a very high likelihood you're going to stay in that industry your whole time. Like construction guys, a lot of their first jobs are like, yeah, I was a swamper on a site cleaning up or whatever. And the next thing you know, you're building your own buildings one day. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, most of the framers that I know that started just to get like exercise at 18, they're, they're construction managers and now they know everything about it. They can do yeah. a renovation from, you know, start to finish. And that's, you know, when you pick your first job as a kid, you might not think you, you'll get stuck into it, but uh, most of the time you do. This is your M truck's first job. Would you know that? Is it really in yeah. radio? Yeah, he's going back to no. high school in September, no. and he's excited. As a 13-year-old, yes. Um, also, my mom's coming at 2.15, so, like, let's pick it up. No, my first job was at, uh, my first job was umpiring baseball games, but my first, like, shift job was uh, at Jersey City. Damn. So I, see, that'd be a good gig, too. Oh, did man. You, did you do the same thing that I did with my first job, and that was spend all the money you made at that place 
on that place. Did you worked at Club Monaco, Chalmers? Yeah. Well, so yeah, I had some real <laughs> fun ones. I worked at clothing stores when I was yeah. like 17, 18 years old, 16, 17. And I would like get my check and I would just be staring at the clothes that I wanted. And I would just basically spend it all on the shitty clothes that I bought and I could now wear. I spent a ton of money on groceries too. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Chalmers was a fashion icon yeah. from ages 17 to 25. I had it going on. Yeah, I had a good style. People thought maybe I went... <laughs> Both ways, but I wasn't too worried about it. <laughs> Let me get this straight. He works at Club Monaco. That is correct. I wore backwards Kangol hats before Sam Jackson did. I was fucking running shit with the clothing industry. I like working at Jersey City. I spent so much of my money on jerseys and stuff, and you can attest to this. I'm proud of my jersey. You have collection. a lot of you have a, yeah. You have a lot of jerseys. I yeah. have a lot of jerseys. That's and a lot cooler hats, than man. Club Monaco I have sweaters. So and many clothing. Hats. It's like a late '90s rapper from Atlanta. You're like, I got every throwback in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, okay, so are we are we still talking about first jobs? We're bring gonna it keep, back on the rails, Ram Chuck. Gonna bring it back on the rails yeah. for you guys. So you get hired to work with Short and Gregor. Yeah. Okay. You just want me to go from there? Well, let's go from there. Yeah, because of it, there was more stops along the way. You didn't just come to Edmonton yeah, and stay no, here. No, no. I um, I so I got hired here with Short and Gregor, and uh, my sister happened to be going to university here at the same time. So I just and she was living with three other chicks and they had a big unfinished basement. So I was just like, I'm gonna live in your unfinished basement. So I had like. Uh, um. Yeah, three other girls. Wait, like three cool other chicks. Like yeah. wow. you know a cool wolf I, blanket you on the wall. You are living the best I, yeah. ascent of I, adulthood I ever. Up, <laughs> I did end up getting intimate with one of them more than once. Bravo! It was good. Excellent. It was making it, it was, was, money. Was yeah. this? Was oh. this? Was this a late stumble into the house and? Just happened to be up, or was this yeah, like this, this, uh, was uh, uh, this was? Uh, I just want to know. This was uh, everybody else was out of the house at the time. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you just but had, you, had you been playing this scenario in your head in the basement, going, which one might just walk down the stairs? <laughs> and you know, that's probably, so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much kind of what it was. I was just like, I'm just down here. I mean, yeah. whatever. Just happens. lying in just bed like with your fingers in the mat. the basement yeah. door so they know your home I'm and just like, like uh, and just start waiting. I'm like number three in produce at the Save On over there. So if you want to <laughs> come on deal. down, like no big deal. If you guys want like yeah. bruised bananas and <laughs> shit, I got that hooked up. It's no big deal. Oh, uh, produce stuff. Random bugs just coming in like the banana boxes. And oh, stuff dude, like, there was some weird stuff. Weird shit. We had, yeah. a, we had a pepper roll in one time in a banana box, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And there, the, the guy, the manager. This was when I was in Cranbrook. So it was like, "Hey, if you find it, you got to eat it." And I was like, "Are you serious?" And I don't eat do spicy food, so I was like, "You got to." So I, I bit this pepper, and I went straight to the milk department, took a milk off the shelf, opened it up, and drank <laughs> it right in the middle of the store. It was. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's some sketchy stuff. But uh, yeah, so I was I was living with my sister. She was going to U of A. And then I'd get up. I'd work at Save On in the morning. I'd come home. I'd watch CSI nice. all day long. The best. And then I'd go call games wherever they needed me to call games. So it was like all over the AJHL. First, the first thing I ever called for any sport anytime dot com was uh, um, a sprint car race in Drayton Valley. Yeah, you know, sprint cars with the oh yeah like the way oh, I yeah. I never oh, yeah. I'd never even seen a sprint car in my life. They're like, we need you in Drayton Valley to do a sprint car race. So this I was is like, Gregor okay. and John Short calling the shots. Yeah, yeah, it was John Short's kind of company, and Gregor yeah. was like probably number two, I guess. And then they had some sales guys on the other side. So I went out to do this sprint car race, and uh, John Short was doing the color guy, and I, I, he was my color guy, and I have no idea. But he knew like everything about every sprint car race driver ever. So I was just like, here they come around the corner again. <laughs> and, and Short was just like, oh yeah, I used to party with this guy's dad. Like he was, I was just like, this guy is a legend. They literally and, gave and you, he is. They literally gave you the hardest sport to like, because you have to buffer like a lot. It this, was unbelievable. Going in circles. What are you going to add to that? Yeah, oh, this guy's going to pull a move on the outside. Like, Bitch, he turns left. You're talking yeah. to a guy who called uh, Alberta Summer Games badminton match? Badminton, badminton and squash in February. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's got range. I never yeah, seen that squash is in my life either before I went and called it. John, not even power, in the produce? That's all I need to know. What's that? Not even the produce section? That's a produce no, joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> squash oh, yeah, that is a squash. There we go. Hey, it it yeah. always, all roads lead yeah. to produce. Oh, yeah. But it was always going to be sports radio for you, right? There was never like a time where you were going to be like, now, coming up in the top 40, it's Dusty Nielsen. We're going to be throwing it to Tayo Cruz. Uh, first of all, I mean, I'd love working for that format. It's a great song. Great guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so like I, I, I did that for like a year. And then when hockey season, when like AJHL season shut down, I moved back to Lethbridge. What year? Uh, 2004-ish, I think. Um, this was all really quick right after school. So then I moved down to Lethbridge for the summer because there wasn't any work for me here in Edmonton. And... Um, I worked for a baseball team down in, in Lethbridge, the Lethbridge Bulls, same league that the prospects are in. Um, did that for a summer, just like media relations and marketing and sales and, and stuff like that. And uh, mascot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to give us a good oh, story okay. with that, yeah. right? So I was, um, 
we had like a minor ball day and as part of the team, we needed to provide our mascot, but our regular mascot couldn't make it. So I was like, okay, well I'll be mascot then. So, and it was this huge bull head, like just this huge bull. And I, I mean, I'm six foot five. So this is a, and the, the boots on this thing are like, so I'm like a six foot eight bull walking around and we'd gone out with the team the <laughs> night before and just got hammered. So I'm walking around in this bull costume and you got kids hanging off your bloody horns and I'm not feeling very good. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to take as much liquid as I can. And finally they gathered all these kids around for like the award ceremony. And I thought this was my window. So I whip around behind the back of the stadium. I, pull off the bulb thing and I just start puking all over this bush and there are these kids walking by trying to get the thing. The bull is dying. Like, oh, the bull is puking everywhere. And I was just like, sorry guys. So I put the, the thing back on, but it was just, oh, it reeked. It was, it was disgusting. As a fellow mascot, I was the mascot in high school. Okay, yeah, nice. Big Bad Joe is a wolf. No, no doubt. I appreciate how hot it gets in oh, those fucking costumes. I don't know how those guys do it, man. Like a mascot costume is... And that was like the middle of the summer in Lethbridge. It was like probably 27, the, 28 degrees. This costume like, couldn't have been made for somebody six foot five. So did you look like, like were the sleeves like way up on your shoulder? Well, it was like. And then your pants were way up like a yeah. flood. It's like most of the pants I wear. Conditioning. They're way too short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, yeah, you're right. A little bit. It was like bull foot, <laughs> human legs for like five inches and then bull legs. So to, to bring it back to the grocery game. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> to, God. To make a few extra bucks. Cause I was on six fifty an hour. Yeah. You there, was an banana costume? there was an opportunity. I had to skip class for it because this paid 10 bucks an hour and that was worth my time in high school. I had to be the dinosaur f- uh, for the juvenile diabetes research awareness month where we hosted a bunch of kids at Safeway and I had to be the dinosaur. I was not hung over. Ah, but I am also part of this guild of Show mascots. You, I Have did not know this. Never, I, I think I could go J. Downton Jeopardy and go to Final Jeopardy, and I did not know you were a fucking dinosaur <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> Ten bucks an hour. That was that's a no big joke. That was that's 50%. Yeah, that's exactly. more than real dinosaurs yeah. made. That's good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were getting way less money. <laughs> so then it's 04. You come back from Lethbridge. Yeah, I was in Lethbridge, and then what happened was at the end of the baseball season, they had the job back for me up here, so I came back up to Edmonton. Uh, to do the same thing again, like the play-by-play. My sister at this time had moved in with her boyfriend in a one-bedroom apartment, oh, and I was just like, boo. hey, Big Get Brother's coming back. No, no. Oh. <laughs> no action. But so I, I, I slept on her sofa bed in their living room for like four months, and I would once again just crush CSI all day. <laughs> um, and then, so yeah, I did that for like four months, but then the company, this is when like Gregor and uh, those guys all moved over to Team 1260, um, and they didn't want to do the online play-by-play anymore, so I was kind of screwed. I didn't. I had no job, so my buddy was, like, um, working his way up at Leon's Furniture in Lethbridge. He's like, come on back. He can hop on the truck. I was just like, all right. So I moved back to Lethbridge, like, completely out of radio because there was, there was just no gig. And um, I got to – started just swamping on the truck, like, just riding shotgun on the delivery truck. So, so when that happens and you're now out of radio, how do you keep, like, I don't imagine they just post on a radio jobs website. Like how, milkman.com. how do you just get back into it? Like, how do you find the jobs? Do you, that wasn't a joke. There's actually a website called milkman.com well, where they I just post yeah, radio that? jobs. I know, but I feel like <laughs> listeners might think oh, yeah, you were no. joking. Yeah, milkman oh, yeah, I know that. is like, uh, it's like a radio ad job advertisement site. So and it just lists all the jobs in like Western Canada or all of Canada, and you can just then apply for any one of them? Yeah, they I mean, they have to do it independently. Like the company reaches out, says, hey, we've got this job, and then you can hop on and apply. So they like post for it. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. So I was that was really convenient. I mean, I haven't had to go on it in a decade, thank God. But uh, um, yeah, it was so I, and it was like two of my really good buddies from high school were working at this Leon. So I did that for like four months, and then I just kept going by the one radio station in Lethbridge and being like, Hey, I've got some experience. I went to school here. So they hired me on to do weekend news, um, at country 95, five in Lethbridge. So I, uh, I'd work haul furniture Monday to Friday, then Saturday, Sunday morning, I go in and read news on the weekend. And I did that for like six months. And then, um, who was it? Uh, Brad curl. Who's now the voice of the Calgary hitman. He left. Um, so I'd open up a job in the news department. So I got on full time and I, at I, where? At the Country 95 and oh, B93 yeah. in okay. Lethbridge. And I, I read news for like two years and I, I hated every minute of it. Like I, I didn't want to be a news. So the second year there, I got to be the color guy for the Lethbridge Hurricanes. So that kind of like got me my sort of hockey fix, which was, which was nice. So I did that for probably like two and a half years, but like the money was shit. Like we were talking about like shit money. Like I was, ma- I was making like after taxes, I was clearing like $980 a month. Like it was... It was ridiculous. That's sleeping on your sister's couch money. Pretty much. I mean, I slept on a lot of people's couches. I'm not going to lie. 
Yeah, so what's kind of crazy about the media industry, I think, is that what people don't really realize is there's not like jobs that just open up every day. And so in order to get a job, you almost have to have somebody quit, like retire or like them add to a show. But it starts a domino effect. Did that domino effect ever happen for you in the right way where somebody moved on and all of a sudden everybody moves up and you kind of come in? Or did you get um, that split on the show? Boy, that's that's a good question. Not, I mean, that that first job, definitely. Brad Curl left, so it opened up a spot in the newsroom. Yeah. So, and my my program director was great. So he was he said, "Hey, we appreciate you doing weekends. We got a gig for you now." So, um, so yeah, that was that might be like the only time though. Like outside of that, it was kind of just apply for a position, get in, and stay there until something better somewhere else comes up. Because I uh, yeah, so I did that for like two years, and then we lost the rights to the left Hurricanes. And um, they went to the new station in town. Those bastards. Well, yeah. And it, the whole situation pissed me off because I had talked to the people at the new station and they had told my sales manager that I was going to get the play-by-play gig. And I was just like, perfect. But the uh, the Hurricanes general manager at the time, Roy Stasiuk, him and I did not get along for some reason. Like we, we clashed and he told that radio station that they couldn't hire me to be the play-by-play guy. Bastard. So I was, I was like livid. I was just like, that's it. I told the sales department at the radio station. I was like, I'm done. Give me a sales book. Put me in sales training. I'm tired of making shit money. I'm going to get into sales. So they hand me this book. It's like five encyclopedias big. And I was like, there's no way I'm reading this. So right away, I was like, I'm not going in sales. <laughs> um, but like literally like three weeks later, I got a call from Fort McMurray and uh, it was a program director up there. He said, my boss who had hired me in Lethbridge had previously moved on. He's like, we're looking for a play-by-play guy up here in Fort McMurray. Do you want the job? You can come up, you can co-host like the morning rock show on like rock 97, nine or whatever. And it was, it was, it was kind of tough because I like, I was making shit money, but I was living with one of my best buddies from high school. We still like, we were in a good sort of party life. We were having, it was like, I was living a pretty good life. Like as far as, uh, a broke guy at the age of 25, 26 goes. But I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Plus it paid like three times as much in Fort Mac. So I was just like, the guy's like, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to, your starting salary is $48,000. I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm making like 16,000 now. I was like, I'm up. Like I'm in. So my buddies are like, why the hell are you going to move to Fort McMurray? I was like, look, man, it's play by play, which I wanted to do. And it's time for me to grow up and get out of here. Like it's forty eight grand. Right? Your rent seven grand a month well, in Fort McMurray. The Don't tell me the details. And I they have a great save on foods up there. I was gonna say you don't <laughs> yeah, even you know what they pay for produce up there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Fifty four so, bucks an hour. So uh, what years were you living in Fort Mac? Uh, I went up to Fort Mac 07 to 09. So you hit the boom oh, of the Fort housing Mac. Boom. It, was it was it was wild. What was the shit you saw up there? You must have seen people at A and W making ninety grand. It shit. was it was it was a little ridiculous. I moved into a uh I got up there, had um bedroom in a house and i got like a two foot by two foot spot in the fridge for twelve hundred dollars a month whoa bedroom bedroom in the house like that's it i was just like oh good thing i got that huge raise because it's all going to these people uh, two by two foot space in the refrigerator is it marked like, yeah, well, yeah they're policed? like this is your little section right here like above the cheese tray so i just filled it with high guard subs and <laughs> and that was it i come home from work i go do the morning show come home go right up to my room like i never hung out with these people at all Went straight up to my room, had a TV in there. CSI. Bed. See, I'd CSI. imagine you, you're part of the fridge, I imagine being properly faced, which is a grocery That's term. That's true. You're yes. right. Yeah. Everything was pulled exactly. right to the front. Yeah. Dude, I still go <laughs> into Save On. Properly. I still go into Save On and face stuff when I'm walking through the office. Because I'm like, this, it's looks, muscle memory this looks ridiculous. Like, come and the on. manager's just like watching from the top. You're like, yeah. that's Dustin Nielsen. He could have been one of the greats. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know what happened in Fort Mac? Like, it was crazy up there then. Like, the traffic was was nuts, but I'd have, I'd have, I mean, people don't speak too highly of Fort Mac, but I mean, I wasn't in the oil worker's life. Like I was a radio guy. We hung out with a bunch of teachers and that was our life. It was just like anywhere else. So I met my wife in Fort Mac at a bar. She was teaching up there. I met her at a bar in Fort now, Mac. Now just hold on. Tell me about your Fort Mac wife getting bar game. What was your move? Uh, well, um, I'd usually just get really drunk and really loud. And yeah. somebody would be like, wow, who's this tall guy? That's really loud. <laughs> And I, yeah, when I met her, I was carrying some other chick around in my arms. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, uh, hey, yes. I'm Dustin. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean. Do you want to ride? Yeah. You know what was crazy was, yeah, your turn. What was crazy was that as soon as I started seeing her, the people that I lived with were like, well, you can't be bringing a girl over to the house. And I, so, I, so I got, they're like, you have to get out. I'm not keeping her in the fridge. Yeah. What do you care? Well, and then what ended up happening was, so they, they 
they basically kicked me out. I'd only been seeing her for like four months. So I'm not like, Hey, let's move in together. So I go down to the radio station. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm your play by play guy. I do your morning show. And I'm, I'm fucking homeless right now. And they're like, well, we have a place downtown here on Franklin Avenue. It's a, it's a lower level in one of the apartment buildings on Franklin. And Franklin's not the most desirable spot in Fort Mac. But there isn't a desirable yeah. spot in Fort Mac. Let's be very you know clear Franklin here. Have, like, no, I don't. I was no, just going to say, at that point, you're saying, it's got They're four walls and a roof? Yeah, so that's like, what Okay, cool. I told my buddy he had a little Ford Ranger. I was like, let's go pack up my stuff. So we back into this apartment. I go in, open up the door, walk in, and there's like garbage and like old food and stuff everywhere. Like this, this apartment's destroyed. So I go walk into one of the bedrooms. There's two dudes sleeping on the floor in the bedroom that I was supposed to be staying in. So I was like, I turn around, I go walking out. I'm like, okay, we're not, I'm not moving in here. So I go back to the apartment or back to the station. I said to this Danette lady who was our like HR manager, I said, hey, just so you know, there's two squatters living in that apartment and I'm never moving in there. She's like, Oh, those squatters are back again. I said, you knew that? Crazy and Mike you and sent the boys. me over there? Like, the, yeah, the, 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 you, you, were the, you were their way of getting them out of there. They're like, let's send the yeah. six foot five guy over. <laughs> it was yeah. Get these two out of here for good. That was your rent. Yeah, so then, then they're like, okay, well, we don't have any place for you. I said, well, so what I did was like for four to five weeks, there was like a huge office, probably about the same size as this, in the back of the building that nobody was using. And I lived in the radio station for five weeks in the back. I moved in my Xbox, my TV. I I get up before anybody else because she's like, nobody can know except me that you're living here. So I I I'd go to bed after everybody left, and then I'd get up and make sure I was like out and about before other people would come in. See that wow. shit should take like three consecutive days to figure out. If I worked with you, I'd be like, so you're just gonna stay here at the station, hey Dusty? Yeah. Like, yep, just gonna. I was just like, always weeks. working. And, you're, and your first guy here in the morning. Are you yeah. like, yep, I'm yeah, the last guy to leave. Just this motherfucker cool. is living here, I guarantee you. <laughs> Despite those circumstances, did you still, did you, were you starting to feel big time at this point? Or are you. In Fort Mac, yeah, because like there was only two stations basically and like 100,000 people at the time. So the guy who worked on the country station, his name was Kenny. He was like a Fort Mac legend. So my co host, James, and I, we would like hammer on him hard and we kind of developed our own sort of our own sort of thing. We had a bit called blame Syncrude where we'd blame like everything in the world on Syncrude because people outside the market would blame Syncrude for everything. And like the president of Syncrude ended up becoming a huge fan of the show. And he'd come in and like, it was like a mean tweets thing almost. And he would come in and do it as well. And it was, it was pretty fun. It was, it was good. And then when they finally moved me out of the uh, station, I ended up living in the morning show guy's basement on a futon for six months until finally my now wife was like, okay, it's time. We have to live together now. I was just like, thank you. I've been like living on people's couches for eight months. Things could not be going worse yeah. for well, me there was right just now. nowhere to live in Fort Mac at the time, man. I mean, unless you wanted to pay like... We moved into a place that was a three-bedroom condo. It was 4600 bucks. Oh, my God. Like, nice condo, but not that nice. Like, no. it was it was wild, man. So, so then yeah. when... When did the big break happen? When did you come down to Edmonton and you're like, hey, yeah. this is happening? Yeah, it would have been two years in Fort Mac. And then um, I saw that... Team 1260 at the time was, um, they were hiring for an evening, for an evening show. And I, I'd been, I'd been still kind of staying in a lot of hockey stuff for hockeysfuture.com. Mm -hmm. I would write for them and I did like, I guess it would have been a podcast. We just called it HF radio. Cause it was like 2005 podcasting wasn't too big. So I'd always go to the draft for them. So I was coming back from the draft in Montreal and I emailed Ryan Zimmerman, who was a program director at the time. And I was like, hey, can I just pop by and talk to you about the evening job? Like, here's what I do in Fort Mac and stuff. So I popped in and I had lunch with him. He was just sitting in the cafeteria. I didn't, I honestly didn't think he was paying much attention. Like he was eating lunch and I was like, please hire me, sir. Like, here's all my shit. And um, so I, it was just like a general meeting. And then I went up to, uh, I went back up to Fort Mac and, and they called me like a few days later and were like, hey, we, uh, we want you to come back down for an interview. So I went down and met with him and his boss. And uh, they, they're like, we want you to come down and we want you to do the morning show, not not the evening show. We want you to put you on mornings. And I was just like, because I told, I told Tammy, my wife, before I left, we were just engaged at the time. I said, I don't know if we want to move down there just to do evenings. Like, I'm nothing against evenings, but I had a pretty good thing going in Fort Mac. And when they said mornings, I was just like, all right, I'm coming. So that was, that was, that was the big break because, I mean, I went to from Fort Mac to here and to a morning show at a sports station that was kind of still developing at the time, but yeah, it was good. My wife's from like the Collingwood area. So she was happy to come home and yeah. So it's, that's an yeah. amazing come up, right? Like to, to be plucked off of 
Fort Mac and dropped in the morning yeah. show in a major market like that. Like that's Yeah, you know what? Fort Mac, that job in Fort Mac, um, Dan O'Toole did it. Like one guy before me. So O'Toole was in Fort Mac, kind of got plucked out of there too. So it's turned out a couple of decent, Interesting. decent broadcasters. Yeah. So you get the morning show on Team 1260. Yeah. When you compare what the show was then to what it is now, like that's just insane, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's changed a ton. Even yeah. like from what I was doing when I started mm-hmm. to what we're doing now, but... Um, you know, at the beginning, I was just trying to survive because they put me with a co-host, Kyle Chase, who was a beauty, but he'd never been on radio before ever. Like he just a guy who was very vocal and opinionated and knew the program directors. So they're like, yeah, we think that he'll be good on the radio. And he just wasn't very experienced. Like some days he was great. Other days when we weren't talking hockey, it wasn't that he's a hockey guy, right? He's a yeah, Crusaders I know GM now, like, crew, you know, yeah. Chaser. So, I mean, I don't think he was ever meant to do radio. So it was kind of a tough spot to, to be put in for me because I never, I mean, I went from being the co-host of a rock morning show and then being like, hey, here's here's four hours of talk radio, boom. And I was just like, oh my God. But um, I just love talking sports. So I just I just found it kind of came natural. And who did you replace on that? It was it was, uh, was Brennan Jake before. It was more oh, on yes, sports yes, with yes. Brennan Jake. So, um, so yeah, it was completely different. I mean, those guys had been around the market for quite a bit and they decided to go with a, with a newbie like myself. And, um, you know, it was, they had a lot of faith in me when they first put me in that spot and, I think it worked out well for Well, you guys came involved, up with so. a lot of fun, like, running things that you would do during the shows, right? Like, yep. were those all your idea? Were those that you and Chase would um, sit around and discuss this? Or? It was, mo- like, a lot of that stuff, and you guys probably find this at the podcast, too. A lot of it just comes naturally. Like, all of a sudden, you're just talking about something, you're like, oh, that's a great bit. Like, let's but we do don't have again. listeners, Dusty. There's a huge <laughs> difference. There's people listening to you. And we don't know which ones are good, so we don't yeah. consistently do them. But, like, that's what it is. It's like, it comes natural between you guys. It comes natural with the listeners. We'll send in something funny. And for the first four or five years, or maybe first three or four years, we didn't have the ability to get text messages. So it was, like, emails and phones. But once we started getting text messages, it, like, makes it a lot more interactive. And that's what I enjoy the most about it, probably. I got some feedback for you, Chalmers, uh, at the golf tournament, yeah. talking to one of our uh, well-lubricated... Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 listeners. Uh, 12 listeners, who I think is listening, because he's got a lot of good ideas. Uh, he told us he loves it when we talk about the bullshit. What bullshit? Like, just any bullshit? Oh, like, just uh, all bullshit? I would say shoot the shit. <laughs> is this the same about- guy Bag Milk told me about? I don't know that uh, I've ever said anything that wasn't bullshit. <laughs> well, like, so I think he likes the entire show. Okay. Well, maybe. Good. But I think He's going to love that grocery talk. I want what I'm saying. When we fall down the rabbit hole of produce. <laughs> He's not the president of Sing Crude, is he? <laughs> that guy was a beauty. Tom, Tom Katinas. That was his name. I don't even know what he's doing. Paul and Tom. Yeah. The thing that I've always like loved about your shows is you turn anything into a fucking bit. Like Small Town Tuesday now is like yeah, that's such a right now. That's huge. Yeah. Like, What's that? What's going on there? Every Tuesday, we, we've gone through the alphabet. We just pick a different small town in Alberta that starts with that letter. And then people just send in their stories about that small town or make shit up about that small town, oh. which is probably the best thing. We did Uncas today, and it's not <laughs> like it's not even a town. It's like an area out by Sherwood Park because it's the only place in Alberta that starts with a U. And we had a ton of people who were like, yeah, my kids go to Uncas Elementary. And I was just, this is unbelievable. You must be getting to the end of the alphabet, obviously. If right. you, are you going are you gonna, to are you gonna, are you gonna start it all over again today? No, or I think gonna... we're just going to end it at Z. Well, I know that he's at the end of the alphabet. <laughs> yeah, you like you is really off. close to the end. <laughs> but you were trying to educate us. Is this, <laughs> is this a, as if that is no, the end of the alphabet. No, is this a 26-day thing you're going to do, yeah, or are you going to do it we've, again? We've done it every Tuesday. It'll be like a bit, I guess, for half a year. And um, this is the one thing that we probably drag on a little bit too much. Sometimes we don't let bits die. This one's nice because it's you get to Z and you're just like, ah, oh, it was fun while it lasted. And then what you can do is like three years from now, we can be like, we're doing Small Town Tuesday again. Oh and people God. Be like, ah, God, do, we, do we already have Z in the hopper? Or? Uh, no, we don't. No, we usually leave it till the morning of. There, no, can't, really? be an X. there can't be many yeah. Zs. No, Z, X. I don't think I don't know if there's an X. Um, what was a there was no Q, so we did yeah. uh, we did a town that had a Q Didn't in it. Did you do Riviere Cabar? Rivi- Riviere Cabar or whatever. Yeah. Well, I played hockey there. Yeah, everybody played oh, hockey yeah. there. That's what we learned that day. It's like so that's fun because it ties things in locally and yeah, it's just um, the, the the listeners drive a ton of that stuff. So you started the morning show in in what year? Two thousand and nine. Ten years this summer. So you have seen as the morning show host one playoff run. Yeah, and it was good. I mean, that so, 2017 was fun. Now, was you're good. talking to the Oilers Nation guys, so we yeah. feel your pain. Yeah. How much has the Oilers sucking made your life hard at work? 
I, uh, you know what? That's a debatable comment because you could say it makes it easier. Yeah, people like to bitch when they suck. So, and you don't want to listen to that every goddamn day. That's my only. No, thing. but I do. Like, yeah. oh, you I, do? I, I don't want to, but I have to, right? Yeah. Like, and sometimes it gets tiresome. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I'll tell you this: when they lose five one, we get a lot more text messages and a lot more phone calls and a lot more interest than when they win five one. So, luckily for us. I mean, they've been shitty for a long time. So the the cup run was great, or not the cup run. I guess we went all the way. No, no, wait, run, second like, round. If it run. wasn't it wasn't for that game seven, I mean, they they might have. But um, like that was that was awesome. It was fun. It was new for me. Um, but I've kind of just got so used to talking about losses and people bitching about this and guys complaining about that that it's almost second nature. Like I would I would love to see a season like 2017 again and just try to remember what that was like because it seemed like forever I did like seven seasons with nothing then we got it and then at that point I think you guys are probably the same way I was like oh this is the new thing like like David's here this is next year's just going to be better people are picking him to win the cup and stuff and Jay and, and I went to every shit. game in the playoffs on the road except for one and we would uh-huh. debate we were like okay we definitely haven't spent all of our money on playoff tickets here too far because there's been none. Yeah. And we're like, well, maybe they'll be in next year. And he's like, I don't know. We might as well live it up while the time's good. So we're like, exactly. Hey, fuck it. We, thank God we did. Yeah. Like, honest to God. Like, yeah. there isn't a- I came out of that playoff run with a raging case of adult chicken pox. <laughs> Are you serious? Dead so serious. Drunk. I was just, I, I just wore myself down so thin. Did you have chicken pox as a child? No. Ah, that's what you so got to get them out of the way nuclear. early. It yeah. was nuclear, and I blamed the playoff run, and I would do it all over again. Oh, yeah. You would take chicken pox again for a second round exit? I had a, I, I had a. That's a big time I, commitment. I like that's it. Like that's one of the best times toe. of my life in the last like thirteen you, years. You know what? Also, with this, that's a that's a cop out because you can't get chicken pox twice. So you can say you take it again, even though you know you can't get it, right? Would you take the mumps for a playoff run, Jay? Ooh, ooh. Maybe the Maybe bends? Yeah. How about shingles? Bends. Shingles? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, sure. Shingles, shingles last forever. What, what about shingles. this? Gout. Oh, I was just no. Shingles. No, no, no. I you might get gout, gout, gout once in no, a while. No, gout I, comes after a dynasty. You're like, I've been drinking rich uh, port and celebrating uh, yeah. victories. You get that from the Red Wine Summit. Yeah. I, they, <laughs> I got gout right now from my trips this summer. Not for real. You actually Legit. have gout? Legit. Oh, yeah, got, it's, but, like, it's like a different size all of a sudden. This has been a tough how summer. You, how much does it hurt? Like a lot. Really? Like, so when I sleep, I usually rest one of my feet on the other foot. How do you yeah. get gout? Are you like an 18th century baron? Like, I, used to guess that, I, know, I guess it's just catching up with me. There's a few buddies that have gout. Man, Rashad had gout last year. <laughs> our buddy Ati Fench used to get it in his feet all yeah, the time. Yeah, protein I know, but now he gets it in his elbow, and the next thing you know, you'll see him randomly one day, and his elbow's like 20. And it's so, it's so weird to see a perfectly healthy human that, like, is in really good shape who cannot step foot on one of his feet. And is hobbling around, and you're just like, what is happening to you? It's like, my gout flared up, and you're just like, what is wrong with you? And now I'm literally living this. Like, I don't have it that bad, but it's like, it's there. That sucks. I've always kind of just been waiting for it to arrive. Like, yeah. I, I'm always just like, I've got to get it at some point, but I haven't yet. I'll, I'll take, I, I would do, I would take H1N1. What? Yeah, I that's would have weird. that for a playoff wow. round. Wow. Because I know I can come out of that. Bold. Yeah, but you could also die from H1N1, can't well, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been told I, I could, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. That's On the spirit. gout thing, I've been told that this beats thing. I had a doctor DM me saying that I am first in line for gout with this beats bit. What? Yeah. Oh, so you're living on the edge. What the yeah, fuck? But then, man. but then on the other side, everyone's like, oh, you got a juice with beats. It's fucking the Life anti the gout lane, cure. Man. I can't believe that you're flirting with gout this much. We're talking yeah. about hypotheticals. By the time the Oilers get to the playoffs, you will have gout. Yes, gout watch. Yeah, gout watch absolutely. 2019. Gout watch. Yeah, you're, flirt, you're flirting with gout like Dusty's flirting oh. with his wife walking around a Fort Mac bar carrying a girl around. Carrying gout around. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dusty, Oilers. Yeah. You are a professional member of the media, but you're also a sports fan. I don't know if you're a diehard Oilers fan because you have to be unbiased. But what do you think? Do you think now that we've made all these moves, are you just as delirious as me and willing to bet anyone that the Oilers are going to make the playoffs? Now, hold up. Are you a fan? I need a well, footer here. No, no, I'm not. Okay. Like, um, I want to see them have success because I think it's great for all of us. Um, but I grew up as a Habs fan, okay? But here's – I'm not even a Habs fan anymore because – and I never thought this would be the case. And if you would have told me like 20 years ago, there's no way this happens, but – I've had the fandom of the National Hockey League sucked out of my life. Yeah. Like, by talking about it every day, by going in the dressing rooms, like, the first time I walked in the Montreal Canadiens dressing room when they were here, I was just like, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. And now when they come to town, I'm like, eh. Like, I don't even know if I need to go down because I don't need anything for the show. Like, it just, 
it it's sad. Like it it sucks it out of you. So like I'm still a huge fan of the NBA because I've never been around the NBA from a work perspective. The NFL, huge fan, but like CFL and NHL, it's it's kind of a job now. So it's weird. I never would have thought that because I was a huge, huge, huge hockey fan my entire life. And it's just kind of been, it's just been sucked out of me, man. It kills me. It's I, like when you're going to the grocery store all the time as a fan of produce. And then you get in there. And then you're in the industry and you're eating the peppers that came in with the bananas. Exactly. Now you're like, oh, it's just a job. Just a job. But I, I remember that too. Like when I started in like broadcasting school three years ago, people were like, oh yeah, you're not a fan anymore once you start getting in sports on that. And I'm like, oh, that's like, come on. I'm like the biggest hockey fan ever. But even now, like, so young in my career, I'm slowly starting to get like that yeah. where I'm like, man, like I grew up such a diehard Oilers fan season tickets going with my dad all the time. And now I'm like, if they lose, I'm like, fucking whatever. If they win, I'm like, well, that's a relief, I guess, because I won't have to deal with idiots on Twitter. I just look at the game from my perspective, what I'm going to talk about. Right. And what are we going to write about? Like, it, it, it kind of sucks. Like, I wish I could just disconnect from that now, but... But, but how can't. excited are you to play the Gaetan Haas goal song? I am pretty excited for oh. that. I mean, if anybody better make this team, it better be that dude, or I'm going to be pretty pissed. God. And this is after my summer of Yessi drama, which I just can't take anymore. If Gaetan Haas doesn't make the team, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. See, there's so many things within your show that you do that when I'm listening to it, I'm fucking fist bumping. So I'm like, yes, that's exactly what needs to happen. You fucking hit the nail on the head so many times in like sports fandom vernacular that like, like it's 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 a treat to even have you on this podcast and then we'll be talking about what else we're going to be doing after yeah. this. But just talking about the Dusty Nielsen show on TSM 1260, 6 to 10. It's a fucking hoot. That's a good plug. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, that's nice. That's hey? awesome. But, don't hey, worry, no one's listening. Now, that, now, now that I've pumped you up, yeah. back to my fucking question. Yeah. Are or who's making the playoffs? Um, yeah, man. I don't, I don't think they are. Oh, um, no. And I'm sorry, guys. Wrong no, place to I'm say up. it. But I, I think they'll be close. And to be honest with you, this is probably what it comes down to. And I don't know if we should be buying into it or not. But I think the others make the playoffs if Mike Smith goes on a 25-game run. And I'm not talking winning 25 yeah. games. I'm talking playing well for 25 games. And here's the thing. Mike Smith can still do that. I think he can. Mike Smith can play well for 25 games. If Mike Smith can give him a stretch where... He goes 16, 7, and 1, or whatever the math is, then they'll probably make the playoffs. Like, I, I don't think Koskinen can do that, but I think Mike Smith can do that. And if they can get a 25 game stretch where their goaltender is winning them games, I think that might be enough to actually get it. But we saw Koskinen do it last year for 10 game stretches. Exactly. A couple. That was 10 games. But his second year in the league, do you not think he can yeah, but crank no, it up a, sec- a little bit? Second year in a the league, these guys who already started finding weaknesses on him. Are just going to tear him apart? Like the but, book is out on Miko. But Koskinen. no, that's a Shoot glass. High. Ha- that's a glass half full, glass half empty thing. The glass half empty says, "Well, the book's out on him already after one year in the league." The glass half full could say, "Hey, he knows what his weaknesses are, and he's going to figure that shit out." If he was twenty four, I'd agree. Well, he's twenty nine. This, dude, this dude's thirty. How much have you guys changed from when you were thirty one to thirty two? Not one stitch. Me Dusty neither. Nielsen. Hey, you were a late bloomer in the broadcast industry, Dustin. Jesus. Maybe Miko Koskinen I was, I was is doing the Dustin the morning Nielsen. morning show when I was twenty eight. Come on, man. All right, let me ask a second follow up question. <laughs> but you I do are, think it comes down to one of those goalies getting hot. You are a pro, and I think that you're very well qualified to answer this question. Where do you think the Oilers program, capital P, where has it gone off the rails since Connor? What is happening? Oh, man. That is a deep question. Well, we got time. No one's listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so since they got Connor, where has it kind of gone What's off the rails? What's gone off the rails? Um, well, I'll just, I mean, do you want... I, I don't. I think bringing in Lucic was the worst thing that they could have done. And I... Because I, I've, I've heard that... I've heard from... I've heard from people who talk to guys who were in that room with him that he was the worst teammate that they've ever had. So you're trying to build this thing around Connor McDavid and you bring in a guy who Peter Shirelli obviously loved because he was there in Pittsburgh but, or in, in Boston. But now that he's gone and it's easy to hear this, that he's gone, but this is what happens when somebody leaves. People start feeling open to talking about this. And a guy who played with Milan Lucic told one of my fellow members of the media that he was the worst teammate that he's ever had in his life. Like, and, and you need to have that room come together. Yeah. And it needs to be led by Connor McDavid. It didn't need a Taylor Hall doing whatever the hell he was doing. And it didn't need Lucic trying to be a big man on campus when he had basically become as close to a non-factor as you possibly could be. So, I, I, I mean, if you could go back and not sign Lucic um, and use that money somewhere else, man, 
I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they'd be right now, but I think it would be in a much better spot. And that's nice. against James Neal, but. But that's why I think the Oilers are going to make the playoffs this year is because they've sucked the fun vacuum out of the room and now made it Calgary's problem, which I'm excited to see how so he torpedoes that. So they vacuumed up a fun vacuum with a super vacuum? A super vacuum. A super that's vacuum. That's what Ken Holland rolls with. Mm-hmm. Uncle Ken flexes super in the suck vacuum. game. It's like a Dyson. I honestly think, I think, and, and yeah, we've got some fringe players and a lot of scratch tickets, but I think that getting that negativity and bad culture out of here. Mm-hmm. Now Connor can go do his thing. I think with Lucic, the only way Lucic is effective is if he has veterans around him to keep him in check. Which yeah, is yeah, what he had That in might Boston. be a fair point. Kind of run, and he was younger then. And you right? could, like, could put him in his spot. Now he was supposed to be one of yeah. the leaders, and he's just like from a media perspective. Lucic was always good. To, he was always there, willing to talk. He would talk well. I mean, it was it, he. He was an easy guy to talk to, and I'm not there as much as the stuffs and everybody like I get down. I'm a morning show host. I'm not an Oilers reporter, right? My job is to have an opinion. If I can get down to the rink and talk to the guys, that's a bonus. Um, whenever I was down there in a Lucic scrum, he was great. I mean, he, he was easy to talk to. He would give you what you were looking for, which is why I guess maybe I was silly, a little surprised when I heard a former teammate say that this was the worst teammate he'd ever had. Cause I, I didn't get that sense at the time. Um, I, I'd see him kind of get a little bit angry at teammates during games and stuff. But I guess that's, it's, it's kind of what some guys yeah. are doing if you're approaching it the right way, but... I heard a guy, Jay, you don't know this because you've been fishing and doing awesome shit. One degree off an oiler, so a guy told a guy who told me that last year's dressing room was the most dysfunctional dressing room he'd ever been in in pro sports. He's like, it was messed up. Just the fact they yeah. got rid of Lucic, he's of the... Like, this guy's still an oiler, yeah. but he's like, that was the worst room I've ever seen. Worse than the I, Taylor I, Hall, Ryan yeah, Whitney days. Yeah. Worse than everything days. I think it's a major addition... By, by subtraction. subtraction. I, I think they can rally around that. And James Neal, by all accounts, from the limited digging I can do in this game, I'm just surfing Twitter to see what they say about him. But I hear he's actually a good team guy. Yeah, I've heard mixed, mixed on I'm that. I'm loving your Kool-Aid right now, Jake. I heard, <laughs> but uh, for like player to player good. Management doesn't like him because he likes to... Okay, that he, might be fair. He yeah, likes, yeah. The, he likes yeah. the lifestyle. But as a player to player, because all I care I about right now... if things are going really good, then he's a great guy to have in the room. All I care about right now, the only thing that's going to bring the Oilers back on the rails right now is the room. We need the fucking room gelling. And now I think now with Lucic gone, I honestly think it has a chance to gel. And that's why I think the Oilers are going to make the playoffs. I think that the thing the Oilers did wrong since, let's say, 07, is they, like, undervalued how impressionable kids are. And, like, when you trade Lubo for Whitney, Mm -hmm. which is like trading a Ferrari for a shoe, and no offense to Ryan Whitney, but, like, I have chronic foot injuries, and we don't do any due diligence to figure this shit out. Then he comes in the room, and he's frustrated, but he's also very vocal and very funny. If you listen to Spittin' Chicklets, you can see how a guy like that in the dressing room. He's great, yeah. I'm going to listen to that guy unless that guy hates his life. Yeah, because, you know, when you when you I remember I was talking about this, but like Derek Roy loved Yak and Yak loved Derek Roy and they had chemistry together. And I remember that like in a room where Yakupov didn't fit in with anybody, Derek Roy took an interest in him and they let him go for nothing. And you look at how that that torched a first pick overall. And now, yes, he's a fourth pick overall torch too, right? Mm -hmm. Bringing in the Matt Hendrixes of the world. And then letting them go for squat is like a perennial problem with the Oilers that they almost don't value character guys in the room. Yeah, and I wonder if that'll change with Holland and and Tippett. I mean, those are two guys who've been around for a long Very time. Player friendly. When when Tippett was where he was, what did he do? Seven years in one place, eight years in another. Like that's a guy who obviously has established and knows how to establish a room. And I, I know people make way too. They think most of us make way too much of it because you know it is the defenseman's ability to move the puck and, you know, taking advantage of the power play, stuff like that. But I mean, you're almost, if you're not pulling in the same direction, which starts in the room, then how are you really supposed to go the same way that you want to on the ice? Which I think, I think makes a huge difference. Well, you've been a draft guy forever. Yeah. How many even first round picks do you think should just jump to the NHL where the Oilers were crowbarring guys in year after year after year. Of course, there's the Connors who are outliers. They come in and dominate. But how many times have we had a guy come in first year out of his draft and struggle, but they depend on him so much? That's that's the issue. Just depend, like need needing them to have success, right? Like needing, like Yakupov, and he did. I mean, he led the team in goals as a rookie, and then Dallas Aikens came in and was like, this guy eats ice cream. What confidence. Now you're scratched after four fucking games. Like, absolutely, I don't know what he was doing. And then, like, the same thing with Jesse Pugliarvi is that they they bring him in, 
Shirelli had to have made some sort of deal with him to get him to come over here. Be like, hey, come over. We'll give you at least your 40 games because what he gave 29, then he sat for 11, and then at game 40 in the season, they sent him down. Like, and, But that's a guy that you see him, you see Yakupov. Yakupov's coming in as an absolute stud out of the Ontario Hockey League. So you're thinking, okay, this guy's going to make an immediate impact. And I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And if the guy has, doesn't have the skill set to do that right now, then, and uh, yeah, sure, you want to put some of it on the player. I get it. But imagine being rushed into any significant job in that occupation, right? Imagine imagine me as an 18-year-old getting the morning show on TSN 1260. Well, your Amtrak did it. How'd that go? Yeah. Yeah, well, the technology's broken like right. twice on this podcast already. <laughs> so you tell me how it's going. No, but like, I mean, how much, how much better was I when I was 29 and got the job because I'd been toiling around in small town Alberta for eight years working on my craft? Like, why is it any different than any other occupation, right? Some people are naturally gifted. They can do it. By the time Others your aren't. brain matures, though, yeah. as an adult, you're out of the league. Like, yeah, I that's think true. Normality starts to kick in around 30, Yeah, right? Like, for me, at least. And I'm still not quite normal, but yeah. you, relatively speaking. Like, when you're 19, you're insane. And if you're given millions of dollars and a shitload of pressure, you're double insane. Show me a 19-year-old in a high-profile job, whether it's sports, whether it's entertainment, who can keep their shit together. It's very hard that's to That's why McDavid's such a freak. I almost think it's hard for a guy like McDavid, and you'll know a lot better than this because you're actually a real person. Is McDavid, in your mind, is he a good leader or is he just so professional and so freakishly skilled? It's hard for a fourth line grinder to even relate to him. Oh, that's a good question, man. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think we've kind of determined what type of all around leader McDavid is yet, right? Like, I think it's it's almost unfair to to talk about his leadership one way or the other. I could totally see. And that would be, I mean, if you're a guy who is elite in anything, whether it's hockey or not, um, it might be hard to relate to a guy who's been plugging along in the American Hockey League for five or six years. I think right? Gretzky's like, a coach, right? Yeah, Gretzky's yeah, a coach exactly. had problems because he's like, what I would do is go get 215 fucking points and start winning some championships. Yeah, and he can't do that, right? And so, even Shane Doan's like, I don't know, man. Really? Which is why it comes down, and this is not, this. I mean, I was totally fine with him giving McDavid the captaincy, and I still am. But that's what it comes down to is having a guy like Matt Hendricks or those types of guys in the room who, who are just naturally leaders and are character guys who can help Connor if he is wondering about a few things. Like Nuge and Hopkins as an assistant, and I love the Nuge, but the Nuge had to go love through the, the exact same thing too, right? So it's uh, it, it'd be frustrating. I mean, not only are you expecting these guys to do a lot on the ice, you're also putting them in positions of leadership whether there's a letter or not involved, which can make it different. And a revolving door of coaches. I think almost picking any coach throughout the decade of darkness and just sticking with him, excluding your might best friend, Alec Aiken. Yeah, might have got you to a better spot. Like, it might, Yeah, honestly, might have. Like, Hey, I'm telling you right now, Connor is ready to lead. He is fucking tired of all this bullshit. The biggest headache, who was supposed to be his co-pilot or leader, probably came and polluted all that shit. He is now gone. Yeah. This is now Connor's team officially, and I think now he is of an age where he's got enough experience that I think he's just upset enough now. He's just going to fucking take the bull by the horns and make this happen. I can't fucking wait for this season to start. <laughs> and Nuge is ready to win. He just won a big horse thing. Oh, yeah, did you see Nuge, that? Absolutely. Yeah, Nuge is just the best. Oh, I could talk to him about horse racing. Hey, boys. <laughs> yeah. Remember me, him, Brandon Davidson? We could have a little round table on horse racing. <laughs> Um, we're getting towards the end of the podcast here, so I wanted to steer this back to you in your career because you've gotten a chance to do some CFL games. You went and did the Spangler Cup yeah. with TSN. Like, you're on national TV now. Like, when you think back to, like, where you were 10 years ago, like, man, you're on fucking national TV. That's got to be the coolest thing ever. Killing it, I think, I think who it's weirdest for is my sister because, like, I, I lived on a mattress in her unfinished basement and, like, barely contributed rent at all. And I was, like, 26. She was going to U of A. So now she sees me on TV and she's just like, how's, how's this possible? <laughs> it's like, like Zuckerberg's sister. I just don't get it. Yeah. She didn't like him growing up, and then she yeah. got to run his foundation. Well, somebody, somebody yeah. like... Just quickly back to that house I lived in, in the basement. They, like another one of their girlfriends wanted to move in. And they're like, she's living in the basement with you. I'm like, there's not even room down here. It's just like a empty basement. So I went to Home Home Depot and bought like like $12 sheets of styrofoam and duct taped them to the floor and the roof and made like a styrofoam room in one corner. That was just my space. Classy. Which was great. Um, what was I talking about? What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> now you're awesome. TV. Oh, yeah, How national cool is TV. That? That's cool too. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Like... Uh, did university for a few years, kind of, and television deal in university, so I kind of got used to that. Um, and then, you know, that's just that's just another thing where, um, you know, you you get an opportunity 
And you, somebody asked about the big break earlier, like that was me. and that, yeah, and that's. I mean, getting CFL gigs on TSN is was a huge break, and it came came my way this summer, and done a few games so far, and I've, I think it's gone pretty well. So that's kind of a future future for me there too. So for a lot of people doing the morning show on TSN is like the end career goal um, for you. Like you check that off. So like what's next? What's your next, like in your brain? Like what's your next big goal? What's your next big dream? Well, definitely a huge podcast coming up. Oh shit. Yeah. That's going to be that's big. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and then you know what? Like, um, you know what? I don't know what, like how long the show goes for, because if, if I can do CFL games, I mean, maybe, maybe eventually I get to be like the number two guy or something and I can do two games a week. And then if I could somehow, I don't want to say weasel my way, but you know what they like to say here, earn, if I could earn a, a NHL gig somewhere, yeah. that would be, that'd be great as well. But I'm pretty, I mean, I'm super busy right now, but I'm pretty happy with where things are right now. We love Edmonton. So there's not a real rush to, to advance here. So let's talk about two guys and a goalie that's going to get going later on this month. How excited are you and tell for the people who maybe don't know what it's going to be all about. Explain the, what's going to be happening. You know, you know what? Okay. So you guys have already chatted with Cassie and, and, and Gager and um, we've been talking about it for a while, like doing some more stuff with, with the nation and the network and stuff. So um, had an opportunity come up to, to find a little bit more time for myself and some opportunity. And then we started talking and I was just kind of thinking, you know, if I want to, if I'm going to host a podcast twice a week to just talk about hockey and then, you know, some fun stuff as well, kind of like I do on the show. Then I wanted a couple of guys who, you know, played in the NHL perfect. And Cassian definitely did. Gager kind of did. I mean, he got like 13 games. Um, that's why he's the goalie <laughs> part of it. Uh, but I can remember as a child being convinced. I'm like, okay, Joaquin Gage, that's awesome. He's going to know exactly what to do. This guy is the future. And now I sit and wait. And I'm like doing the math in my head. I'm like, oh my God, it didn't work out. Yeah, but Gage <laughs> is a beauty. I mean, he is a beauty. Oh, he's, a yeah, yeah, he's my cable guy. He's like one of the first guys I met when I came to Edmonton. So um, he's good. And then Cassie. And so we're going to do a hockey podcast twice a week. The thing that I liked about those two guys is that I know both of them listen to my morning show. So they kind of understand how I operate and my type of sense of humor and, and things like that. So I think the three of us will work really well together. And, um, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to this because on the morning show, you know, I talk quite a bit of hockey during the season, but not all hockey. Don't kind of get into it super deep. And not that we're going to get into it super deep on the podcast either, but it's something that's dedicated to hockey and then and some fun stuff as well. And I think, I think that might bring back the fandom, to be honest with you, a little bit, like talking from it from a different perspective. So I'm kind of excited for that. You're an Oilers Nation HQ, Dusty. If yeah. you're not going to be an Oilers fan here, yeah. I don't know what the fuck else has to happen. I'm, to a, I'm, a, I'm a flyer, man. I'm a wild, I'm a wild card. We'll get you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get you coming to some events. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think, first of all, I think the name's awesome. Oh, yeah. Two guys and a goalie is Goals. Yes. sweet name. We're still going to work on the branding of this, and that's, that's our deliverable to you. Yeah. But I'm very excited. I love the dynamic we had. Joaquin and we had uh, Cassian on over the last two weeks. They're everyone, great, right? Oh, everyone, everyone got to get a taste of them. Like Cassian, just like obviously like crazy NHL fighter, cool come up story. So well polished on a microphone. Yeah. Funny guy. He's got crazy stories. And Joaquin Gage blew my mind. I didn't know what to expect. And the the stories that he has, but just like his career, like when he, when he was on like the Olympic team. He was all over the place, man. All over yeah. the place. He has seen it all and done it all and connected. Like the names and his stories that he mentioned, these are like yeah. big fucking deals. Like it's cool. I'm like, like Radio Gager. <laughs> right? He was all over the place yeah, in Europe yeah, yeah. playing hockey and I was all over Alberta. And they've had, and this is what's crazy about sports and why I think every single athlete I've ever met and had a conversation with, they're in their own head. Every single one. They're all pissed about something. Athletes don't value money. All their life excitement's front end loaded. And they're like in a really weird headspace, right? And I think guys like Joaquin Gage or guys like Cassie, and they, they've they had amazing careers. Mm -hmm. They just weren't in the NHL. And when if you said that to anybody, like I did something for 15 years and I was a photocopier salesman and I went to Europe and worked in Europe for a long time, people were like, oh, you had a really good career, an international angle to you. Hockey, they're like, hmm, I don't know. You went and played in Europe. You probably suck. Yeah. They don't suck. The guys who are playing in Europe are making A, good money, B, in many instances, playing very good quality hockey. And it's pretty, yeah, and it's amazing over there. Yeah. Oh, it's the best like, lifestyle going. I was in Switzerland for 10 days. And it was just incredible. Like, incre the hockey atmosphere over there is like Spengler Cup's next level. 
but it's it's amazing. And everybody who's like played overseas is just like, oh yeah, Spangler Cup. You keep great. doing you keep doing Spangler Cups, and we're gonna put together a trip to come stalk you doing yeah, Spangler absolutely. Cups. I respect to finish that thought though. I respect the international hockey player. I respect guys who play in the A. I respect guys who go over to Europe. When I was younger, I didn't. I was like, mm, gross. You didn't play in the show. Yeah. Whatevs. I now I've rewritten it in my mind. Those that's good hockey. And guys who played for 15 years, you had a very successful hockey career. 100%. Yeah. Sticking with Europe, we can't let you out of here without asking what is going to happen with Jesse Pooley, oh, RV, and Finland. Come on, come on uh, man. I think he's going to light it up. Is he staying I, there all year? Is he going to be back? Uh, I think he's, uh, let's go with this one. I think he's going to uh, light it up until the end of October, and then somebody's going to trade for him. How's that sound? Dusty, I'm, uh, I because you're, you're still big. Pooley Harvey fan, correct? Well, I, you know what? I'm disappointed. It's like a father thing. Yeah. It's like, I'm not mad, man. I'm just disappointed that you handled it this way. Yeah, yeah. He's He's been kind we of We are all done with Jesse Pooley no, Let's no. talk <laughs> big brother. No, no, no. Before, before you do, I got to, I got to, I got to. Yeah, true, true. true. I, I'm, 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 I'm teasing here, Dusty, about his Pooley Harvey fandom because I'm actually going to be doing something pretty cool. In about eight days, I'm going to be there. watching him. I know. Live with my eyes. Are you going to talk to him? With my with our boy Larvin. Take him over Friend of the nation. Dude, if there are jerseys over there, you have to bring me one back. I will. I like with his name on it. So 100%. I got to so wear I, it for Rick Lee. Yeah, I'm supposed to get Rick one Smack as well. Smack him when so, you see him. Well, I'm trying to. Well, no, no. So you got, I got to be political here. So Larvin is very connected to the Finnish hockey scene. Uh, so he's lined up for us to go. I'm trying to see if he can get us to do some kind of meet and greet. And I'd love to just get a video of Jesse just saying like something to the fans, like yeah. remove the hockey and just let that. That's the mission. If we can pull it off. Great. Repair the image. It might not be, it might not be, it might have to be Larvin and just going and doing it. But like, that's the, that's the angle. I'm let me try just, to. let me just say this to wrap up on Jesse Pugliarvi. After what we talked about earlier in, in the podcast, his most common line mate in three years in Edmonton was Milan Lucic. The anchor. So let's just leave it at that. How is that possible? How did you put this kid with that guy? Because it's the years. upside down. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Hot Whoa. take. I like it. We got two more things we got to talk okay. about. Yeah, we, we do. We haven't had an ad this entire show. Is that a problem, your Amchuk? Don't you worry about it. Have you got holes to dig, earth to pack, and roads to build? Then you need to call Jabba Machinery Group. Does your equipment need a service? You yeah, can't fix stupid, but here at Jabba Machinery Group, we can fix everything else with a full range of parts to keep your equipment running smoothly. Chapa Machinery Group is a family-operated and Alberta-grown business. Here to help build a bigger and better Western Canada. Give us a call or visit us at chapamachinery.com. Chapa Machinery Group, join the family. I want to shout out Chapa because they were at our golf tournament. Thank you, Marin, for hosting the long drive hole. Golf thank tournament you, was great. Thank you for attending, Dusty. That was, that was very good. Star power. Star power. The star power was tight. We had Gregor, Struds, Dusty. We had a team that shot a career uh, minus 21. Cheaters. Sure that they is, did. That sure is, they there's going to be a kangaroo court of some variety being held for that. <laughs> but good for them. We got the trophy back, which is good. That's from Tiffany, Dusty. That Tiffany I, I made know, that I trophy. I saw it. It's great. It's quality. That's Lord Stanley's Cup. I touched it, but I didn't earn it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, golf term is good. Thank you, Jappa, for for uh, participating and being a very long term and supporting sponsor of everything we do. I also want to give a shout out to Marin for personally walking over a handful of pens for me. She what? knows I love them Jappa pens. Love them Jappa pens, Tyler. I want to apologize to the folks at Jappa for about five holes. I was the worst golfer you could ever imagine. I picked it up a little bit Were on the back Were you golfing night. with them? Yeah, I was nah. golfing with the Jappa boys. Good guys, though, eh? Like, the Gro- best. Oh, they did. Just I guarantee they didn't beauty. make you feel too bad about that. Well, I, I remember there was a couple of times, like... I'm an okay golfer. You've golfed with me before, Dusty. Yeah. I can carry, I can, <laughs> I can not yeah. drag the group behind, right? I'm not a great golfer, but I'm, I'm competent. Passable. Yeah, I'm passable. I was not passable for five holes. I was duffing them 15 yards every time, shanking them into the trees, like terrible. Brutal. And I remember I would be shanking shots. So I'd go pick up my ball, I'd turn around. I'd look at the guys at Jappa. And it was like looking back and having your father disappointed. I look, I'm like, <laughs> I'm pressure. sorry, guys. I, it, was, it was a lot of pressure for me. It happens. And they were just like, hey, it's okay, buddy. Don't worry about it. They were so supportive to me. Um, and they'd be supportive to you if you went in to buy equipment from them. Very wow. nice. Uh, Sean Green, who you played with, is my de- defense partner for life. And Russ Bray is the heart and soul of, of our men's league cutters. team. Oh, yeah. That guy who come, shows up to compete. Sean Green's my brother-in-law. 
<laughs> yeah. And I allowed him in grade eight to have a date with my sister and then forced them to marry at age 31. <laughs> Interesting. He's yeah, a little yeah. protective. Yeah. But All Sean's right. good man. So as we do on this podcast, I'm now going to yell at you guys because we've gone really long. Wait, like, can't we talk Big Brother? Okay, yeah, I know, yeah. but we got to talk Big Brother. But you also need to talk Angler Cup, yeah. right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm just going to, I'm not going to get into it. I know. But when you said that the podcast was almost over, I almost flipped the fucking table ah, because okay. I have a rebuttal for literally everything that JR said. Kay. So let's do Big Brother first because well, I don't know if Dusty needs to hear. Our, wait. Maybe you could play judge on ours. I know. I would, but I would, but yeah. here's what I need. got a plan. Let him do his plan. Here's what I need to get across. This is going to be a long ass podcast because I feel like you guys are going to go with this for like 30 minutes. I'll be quick. I'll be very short. Okay. Jay says he'll be quick. Yeah, because he doesn't have anything, any lies left to spew. Okay, <laughs> so you think you can do it in a timely matter or do you want to wait until next week and no, you can do a full? No, I'm doing this now. Chalmers has one you, note okay. on here, and it says death to JR regarding you can fishing. Do, okay. You can do a thing where people, I don't know what the whole time constraint on a podcast right. is, but people can, you could put like a little number on there that people can just fast forward to when they want to get my, you know, to let them know okay. that they can okay. stop there okay. at that but point. But we're going to do Big Brother first. Okay, Janie's done. We're just going to give Dusty a little <laughs> context. So just so he knows what the fuck we're talking about. We already put him through the intro with and no, then we'll close <laughs> with with no debrief. We'll close. Well, yeah, we'll, okay. Good. Well, it depends if he wants to be part of this, but I just, like, I just want to give him some context so he knows what the fuck we're talking about. Every year, our crew of friends, we have an angler cup, so it's a fishing derby every year, and it's like the ultimate. It's it's at the same level as fantasy football in terms of bragging rights, and it's it's sixteen friends. It was our sixteenth annual. Oof. I I I am the twenty nineteen angler cup champion. Congrats! Thank you. Uh, I uh, steroid free. No and cheating. if he keeps talking, this is where the lies are going to start because that's all truthful. But everything I feel like Thank you're you. going to say after this, no, 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 is a lie. Yeah. So, so what? So the 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 beef that we want to get into is we want to talk about something that happened a few years back called Chumgate, okay. where there was a group of fishermen within our Angler Cup Derby that got busted for cheating by okay, chumming enough. the water. This is all you get to say. <laughs> okay. But fact? No, that's what? not a fact. You guys. Have you ever had a group of friends he who made the up time something? for the crime? There was no crime. There was no judge. It was judge, jury, and executioner without even hearing our sides. You looked at the best fisherman at the time and the second best fisherman at the time and accused us of something we did not do without even hearing our story. We had rebuttals for every single fucking thing that happened. And then when you came on the podcast last week, Every single thing you said was a lie. Okay, uh, so let me Starting stop you right here. there. No, so I'm not going to no, let no, you go. No, you no, had no, your time. No, I have to stop you right there. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the, reason, the reason why they got accused for the crime, because there's three fishermen we're talking about, not two. He's alienating the one who busted them and ratted them out. The whistleblower. Ooh. There's a whistleblower, Dusty. There's a whistleblower. <laughs> he didn't know what he came, was saying. He's the one that came off the boat after that boat had a champion on it. This was his it, very first but, year. And he, goes, and he felt wow, pressured to go. The fish really started biting once you know, we started chumming the water. Dusty, you Verbatim. know what? Said it once. Just listen. Are he you said done? it once, and then he said it two more times Are you to the group. So much so, everyone heard, and we had to react. There it is. <laughs> Have you set. ever seen in like the first forty-eight or one of those crime shows when a witness is sat and has a bunch of people basically telling him what to say, what to believe, and what to think? And sooner or later, these people get broken down. It's called entrapment. It is called entrapment. This was his first year. He'd wanted to be here for so long that he would have said anything at this point. So let's just start he from there. He volunteered the information. You said you were going to be done. But he so volunteered the information. You're making it seem like we no. cornered him when to he get said, to, to when say something. When he said a key word of, we threw a minnow in the water. No, no, no. You guys he said it. the word once okay. we started let's chumming the this. water. Let's talk about facts. Fact That's is, a fact. We'll get to your facts. The fact is, is the very first year I was in this, you claimed that I had, that I just had to be with the best fisherman in the group and that I every year made it a point to say, I have to be with this person. There's three boats, okay? Uh -huh. One boat has five people on it. Uh -huh. They're never coming off it. Another boat is a small little fishing boat that had three people on it. They were stuck on that boat. They wanted to be on that boat. The only spot that was left was a spot on Jerry Macaroni's boat. And that's this where I not, went. This is <laughs> not, just for everyone listening who listened last week, that is not Jerry Larry. A completely two different Jerry. Two different Jerry. That's so another I, story. Is Macaroni is real last name? Or no, is no, okay. fake no. Name. So it's an alias. But he was, at this point, when I came into the Derby, by far and away the best fisherman there was there. Okay? He and I, we went on the same boat. I had to always, learn from Why always wouldn't anybody? Wanted to fish with them. I'm a, I'm just hold on. A, I'm are you going to keep interrupting me? Or are you going to let me go? I'm with macaroni. I'm with macaroni. Okay, are you done? 
Yeah. So the very first year, I had to be on his boat. I had to. There was no choice. And he just like just like I anybody else would do. I looked at him and I learned from him. Okay. Second year, learned how to charm. Third, third year, I win the thing. Fourth year, I come in second. Fifth year, I win the thing. Okay. Now everybody's getting all fucking. Why is he? How is he doing this? So the sixth year, the year in question of Chumgate. <laughs> We had, we, we, he loses, uh, Lavin loses his boat. He takes it away. So now me and him are going to be on this little tiny fishing boat with the new guy. Okay. So we go out there and as, as we had done, Jerry goes, Hey, we got a little ritual. We throw a minnow over our shoulders for the gods. And the new guy says, sounds good. We all do it. Now, does anybody know anything about frozen minnows? They fucking float. Okay. These things sit on the top of the lake. Until they Where thaw. are walleye, Jay? And then are they, they sink. at the bottom of the lake? They don't yes, float they the whole are. time. Just they listen. sink. Well, you had your chance last week. You're trying week. to use science. I gotta, if you're going to use science, I have to make sure so, we defend the so, science so community. So by throwing one minnow in the lake, is that called chumming? <laughs> by definition, if you throw food into a lake to attract fish, it's chumming. But if you throw one over your shoulder, it floats at the top of the water. Uh, I think that might be stretching the truth a little bit about what chumming is. So now, in, in, in the year oh of Chumgate, no, 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 in the year of Chumgate, in the year of Chumgate, after that, one of the members on the boat repeatedly told us they had chummed, that exactly saying the word chum. In the third round, so we do three one-hour heats. In the third round, we kept looking over their boat, and there'd be a flock of fucking so birds. So here's why. Swimming we, and diving just, into just the so, water. Just so I can give you diving a... Diving into the water. Oh, why? Because they the see fuck up. <laughs> it, For two seconds, I could give you a lay of the land. We have three boats, okay? You are allowed to move through every round. And every round, people move. We all start no further than 20 feet from each other. So if I chum the waters where I am, which I did not do, don't you think that would benefit every boat in a fucking 30-yard radius? They're all right beside us to the point where we catch each other's lines and we don't even cast more than 5 to 10 feet. But you already got right hot. We're trying to catch. They've already got the hotness. They've set no, the hotness this, trap. No, no, then no. Then we come after always, the fact. We that always, three to four to five fish advantage... Before we, we always, move, it's huge. We have always done this. There's only one way to settle this. You have to fight naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I got to get to my real point. Jay says that everything I did was based on cheating. Every single thing that I had done was based on cheating. Uh, hey, and he said I had not. been hyperbole. Would you I will shut admit. Up, I will please, admit. Just shut up. <laughs> he said, as a fact, that I had not finished top ten. The three years after that. Well, I'm going to pass you out a sheet. Oh, he brought sheets. Finishes he brought sheets. Of the three years after. And I'd like you guys to help me read along with them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the year in question is 2005, where Sean La or Jerry Macaroni won. Uh -huh. I came in second. And the guy on the boat, the new guy, came in third. The next year, Jay, 2016. What place did I come in? Have a look. I, under, I, I highlighted it for you. 2016 <laughs> was Chumgate. He did highlight no, it. No, 2015 was. 2016 was not. And I finished third that year. 2017, I finished ninth. See the red line? That's top 10. Yeah. Notice so, how they're I all said, over top. I, then, I used a little oh hyperbole. God, be quiet. <laughs> then, the 15th annual, 2018, I came in fourth. So, yes or no? Did I finish top 10 every one of those years? Everybody can answer at once. Yes, you did, Chalmers. So do you agree that I finished top 10, third, a fourth, yeah. and a ninth? I'm using, I was using hyperbole. The thing is, is you've definitely- You lied. It's called taken, lying. Hyperbole is when you exaggerate back. something. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. On CSI Miami, Dusty. Oh, I love that show. Yeah, you know yeah. this. All right. So let me, let me yeah. if, if, if you've got people on, we'll say in a car, mm -hmm. and there's a crime that's committed, and one of the witnesses in the car say, I know that guy did it. I'm going to go and, and attest to that. Is that not like a credible witness? Is that not like It would be evidence? a pretty credible witness. Like, like, isn't that damning, <laughs> it, damning it would be evidence? A, I mean, whether it's CSI Miami, CSI New York, I mean, it's a in credible any, witness. In any CSI city, but, like CSI but with that being said, I'm wondering if the witness doesn't understand the he term doesn't. chumming. No, he no, 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 no. He threw he one is, minnow He over. is now, by far Dusty, the most avid fisherman we know. Ooh, Dusty, when you fish thing, for an hour and you consistently put minnows on your hook and then you cast and you come back and you don't have a minnow anymore but you didn't catch a fish where's that minnow going it's going to the bottom so after 10 minutes of 16 guys doing that is that considered chumming jr all, all, but Chalmers, so on all the third we have, round you're just telling us your side of the round? story all i'm saying is facts the fact flock of, of birds 
Guy on the boat, not a multiple fact. guy on your boat, multiple times saying that you guys chummed. Who he is never the said probably that. most? Yes, he did. He said we threw one for the gods. No, 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 no. He said, "I said this is a, a thing that you got into." But he, he three times used the word chum right when he got off the boat at the end when the, when the winner won. He did it in the morning debrief. We're all sitting as a group. He brought it up, and that's when a group of a private group chat started to be like. Is this for real? Like, he's going to keep if mentioning this? If we got this? him to call in right now, he would not agree that that's how it went. I think we have to get him in here. What's his number? 780. If you want me to, I can call him. The call road, him right now. The roadcaster pro allows. What, can you really? Maybe well, let's, they, do maybe no, let's break it down. We let's, tease, gotta call again. Maybe let's, let's tease it for next week. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's do a call Here's next my week. Defense. Here's, yeah, 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 just, here's my defense without yelling at Jay and without... He came on the podcast, and there's a lot. Like, if his one thing about me not being top 10 is hyperbole, how can you not assume that every other thing oh, that he said was hyperbole? Nope. He, how can you not? When, when I know what happened, and the best fisherman on the boat, what happened? And here's the other thing about Chumgate. They told us that we could not use minnows in the first round next year. We gave him a penalty. They gave us a penalty. In that first round, it was 1-2, me and Jerry Macaroni. Jerry we caught no in, fish. Yes, he, he ended up winning that. He ended up and winning because he got hot. We came in. Yeah, yeah. But in the first round, it was cold for you guys. It was not cold for us. You have a bad memory, man. No, well, uh, we'll, we'll, so, we'll, we'll so crowdsource that memory. So what this has become is, and because they like to do this to me, because I come <laughs> in, and after five years, I've won two. You got to take down the champ. That's hot. When, when huh? everybody is not winning anything <laughs> except for me as well. and this other guy, also who's hot. just clearly way head and shoulders above the rest. You can't take him down. Everybody knows, but I come in like a fucking bolt of lightning and I start making these idiots look like fucking idiots. And, <laughs> you know, they had to find a thing and they found a thing. They try to do it in fantasy football. They try to do it every way. And I become, so we come on this podcast, you take the most reputable person in the fishing derby and you say, and, and, and you think that he would allow me to chum the waters. It's just ridiculous. Like if you, you there's not a person in this world that would say a bad thing about this other person. Jerry Macaroni, yet he, great guy. That, yet these guys somehow Hello, can take fisherman. this chum gate that he's a part of and somehow really, really put him in the shadows and make it all about me. It's, it's, it's a tactic that they do. It's bullying to a certain extent. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. Okay, hold on now. Hold anyone on, hold who on, just on. listened, anyone who just listened it's to this, not actually I bullying. would like to know who got bullied in the last 15 minutes. Here, Amtrak, I'm going to come in and help you here. I do not want this argument to stop. <laughs> I want to get someone. Live call. feeds. I want Jerry Macaroni phoning in next show. I want to make this shit happen. I want you to put a bookmark in your rage and no. Do you actively think I cheated? No, I don't think you did. But I want you to understand one thing. Bag milk, do you? I just want to ask one question. Yes. So last week when we were talking about this, scale of one to 10, how mad were you when Jay was going through his bit? I was, uh, so I listened to it purposefully for the first time on the way here. And I'm telling you, my feet started to tingle while I was driving. I went and got a Red Bull from the oh, grocery store. Oh, the first one minute. I've had in a long time. I was, my heart rate, I had three cigarettes on the way here. That could Ooh. be the, yeah. I was shaking. I was so, I was yelling at my radio. And I haven't, because I was listening to myself basically get defamed. <laughs> And I wasn't there to say anything about it. Well, and, it's because he wasn't there. With, 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 the with non-facts, with hyperbole. Okay. Hyperbole, non-facts. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I will just say, I, I, the, the facts I so quoted 10. So are level in, 10, if you're asking. So I was the facts at an 11, I quoted like are indeed facts. Amp. Okay, now hold on. This is very funny. <laughs> As a guy... Sorry, Dusty. I'm cheering no, for no, you. No, I've got one thing <laughs> to no, say. No, you like that. Oh, you want... Okay, no, then I'm going to... Yeah. Don't worry, Ramchick. I got this. We'll be talking about Big Brothers faster than you can believe it. Go ahead. No, I just... I've never even caught a fish. Oh, so <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking well, about right now. Uh, I've been your friend Chalmers since we were little. But you can tell yes. it's a passionate event. And I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> yes. People that make life enjoyable going through it are people who take shit inappropriately seriously. The kind of people I don't like, legit, are people who are like, mm, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion either way. The reason why everybody picks on you is because you are the most able to defend yourself and the most entertaining. If you're not mad about shit, it's not really that funny. But when you lose your fucking marbles and start telling everybody that you came to join fuckers to make them into super fuckers, frankly, I'm glad there was Chumgate. I know. I do exactly. enjoy. I do enjoy. <laughs> I do enjoy the defense I have to take in a lot of aspects. You're, good. Not, you're so very good. good. But what I, I was don't you. like, what I, I was don't you. like, what I don't like, is arguing two different ways with people. Number one, with people about how they argue, telling me why are you getting so mad, why are you doing this, why are you being so loud. I can't stand that. That is a 
escalating tactic and it fucking needs to stop in arguments. Number two is I never did when it. people lie and straight up tell non facts and tell it when somebody else is not there to defend it. That's my second biggest pet peeve in argument. I definitely you, did it when you weren't here. You but definitely I'm lied. you I told facts about the two key pieces of information. Stop it. And that's it. Okay. Now Everything stop else, it. I no, definitely just hyperbole. Stop it. Your M-Check's going to start hitting the 8088 machine here. We're not going to be able to hear shit. Previously on Big What is that? I don't, I don't know. know Big Brother. Okay, oh, good. it's previously oh. on Big Brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gonna we're putting a bookmark in that because that shit ain't over. What okay. a, what an amazing let's back move. And forth. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the computer isn't even plugged in, Dusty. No one's listening to this shit. Let's be fucking honest. Jay knows I love him to death. Yeah, I'll okay, but we're bookmarking this shit. We're book- like, no, sir, more, no, sir, more, no more, no more, no more. Sober sent me a text before this. <laughs> He goes, you know I love you, right? I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> and then just like nothing and yeah. then this. Uh, hey, but we're bookmarking this shit. You're not just going to unplug our mics. BB21. Okay. BB21. Yes. This has been a very exciting week. You're watching? I'm two episodes behind. I am, oh. I am busy as hell, so. I do not want to so talk you So we can't over. spoil no, it No, you can tell you. me. I follow on Twitter, so I'm kind of in the loop. Like, feel free to spoil. Who are you pulling for? Oh man, you know what? This kind of midway through the season, I I kind of stopped wanting. Are you to pull liking for this year? Of them. I don't. I don't. I like it. <sighs> there's been better. There's been there's been better. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. There's been better. Um, I liked some of the drama that was going on before Jack before Jack got out. Like at least gave you something like, man, I got tune in watch watch these assholes. But uh, it's now it's do you kind see why he reminds bit. you so much? Why it reminds everybody of Jack so much? <laughs> I didn't even know that was the thing. Because he said it differently. Long, long flowing hair. And then he goes, and I said it. he goes and he says, everybody, every, everybody, those three know each other. They yeah. know each other. Not a fact. Hyperbole, I, I guess. I, I honestly think Tommy's going to win. I do yeah. too. Yeah. He's got a chance. He's, I mean, everybody's going to vote for him. I think when it comes down to the final competition, he's probably got what it takes to but win, a, win a part one or a part two or if whatever. If Mickey's smart, he backdoors don't, him. Don't you think Tommy's real problem will be that when he has to answer questions to everybody else at the very end, that people will say, yeah, your social game was perfect and you floated between every single person. Everybody oh, liked you, true. but you didn't do anything big ever. You didn't win any competitions. Like he won one, but he didn't do anything that was pivotal to how he got there. Yeah, he wasn't he just, the mastermind of anything. No, he just basically yeah, was true. super likable and did what kind of everybody thought he was going to do. And I'm going to have to. Sorry, go ahead, Jay. Oh, it, it, it all depends who's sitting next to him for him to win. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was yeah, just going to say. Yeah, I think that of late, and I don't want to ruin this for no, you. No, go ahead, go ahead. Because Mick, we're like, yeah, Mickey we has been up. living in the HOH house now for a month. Yeah. Okay. Between him and Holly. And it looked won. like he was on his last legs there for a Oh, while. yeah. And yeah. It, like him winning so much has removed him from all the drama. Yeah. He's not a threat to anybody and no one's trying to gun for him. Right. And I think that like he's lost his fucking marbles. He doesn't want to get Christy out of the house. I know. Yeah, that I is the first move Christy's going to make if she gets a fucking micron of power, Mickey, is going to be to kick the guy out. He's an who's idiot. won five competitions. He's an idiot for not taking her out yet it makes no sense makes no sense but i would actually do like if he's really smart i really it it it, it, he's you gotta (laughs) i shouldn't say this but he's gotta get out uh tommy tommy (laughs) cheeky fucker Mm. um i think well who wins if it's those two guys in the final tommy or mickey yeah Probably Mickey because he's straight up just just like just because um, like dominant, Kat Kat hates yeah, dominant. Basically, no. his 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 resume. I think you at think this point, Mickey will win. I think yeah. so too. But I think don't if anybody think had any got a little bitter game, taste. It doesn't matter. Bitter. It's gotten better of late though because he doesn't have any beef with anybody, and it's but allowed him to like, run the way. But like Cat, Cat won't vote Mickey. Yeah, she'll. Vote, you know why? Because she know hit her with the you know I what. When, I think <laughs> when you're one, I think you when know. you're sitting on the jury and you have the choice between your bitter taste in your mouth for somebody or their complete dominance in the game, I think if you respect the game, you always take. Well, it. then Paul should have won the last two times he sat in the chair. That's a good point. Well, well, the one time Dan first good lost point to of the day, buddy. Yeah, Dan should have won that year too. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Mickey is a lot like Paul. I don't think he's going to win because of the shit he had to do to get to where he's at. Yeah, but Paul was like even worse. He was worse. Paul was such an asshole running a house of minions. So. Mickey oh. hasn't been a dickhead for the last month because he hasn't had to be. Yeah, he's definitely I just, calmed down. I can't down. get over a guy that absolutely doesn't want to win something and just has to. Like, he, but then doesn't even like he doesn't want to, but yet he still wins it. Like that's how dominant he is at this exact moment in this house. Yeah. And to to think people like I know that puts a huge target on his back, but at the same time he's rolling with two people in Cliff and and Nad and Nicole. Sorry, that are like. If they, if those four just stick together, yeah. and, and, and they, they will, and they will, and like 
he'll make it to Final Four with those. I, yeah. I, I firmly believe that they're going to make it. I can't imagine that... I shouldn't say that actually because you haven't. Watched no, the go ahead. Time. Like I said. Well, no, but There's I can't imagine. I can't imagine yeah. that somebody that's been on the block as many times as a certain person is going to skate by it much further than yeah. a couple more weeks. Yeah. Like it's just. I think you know it's the writing's on the wall for her. Um, and then like floaters, they just don't. They they just don't last. He's putting right? him in a good. He's putting himself in a good spot. Keep, let him keep him floating. Like yeah. the fact that they want to make Jess the target because of her memory or whatever. They're running it's into reasons to is, get rid of people. Just, yeah. She's just not a part of the alliance because she can't do. Yeah, shit. yeah but, but and get, Nicole is fucking so lucky. Cliff was like, "You got to bring Nicole." Oh, God, but I love Cliff. like the Are you Cliff maniac. I love Cliff. I love, I love Cliff. Cliff. Cliff maniac. He was, he was the biggest idiot ever. Did you see his first H O H? Yeah. When I was, he does a really good move and then he totally goes back on it. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? But I love the Cliff Hall. Did you dance. see him Sunday? You see Sunday? Yeah. When he was dancing with his imaginary wife? Yeah. That's nice. Bless his heart. Oh, he's got a heart of gold. It's amazing he's hope... still even in the house, man. Those old people. Because when he needed to, he nutted up. I, know. Well, I hope that those, like, specifically Cliff and Nicole, are studying their asses off for when it gets into the mem the memory comps. Because I feel like those are going to be the only way he gets to take a shot at Mickey and Holly. Zingbot's zing on Nicole. Oh, oh it was so good. Was it was heartbreaking. Did you see it? Oh, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, Zingbot walks in and he's, he's, and he's zinging. And he's like, uh, Nicole, you have no friends and no boyfriend. And no contact with the outside world. It's the same as real life. <laughs> no, it was hard. Like, but she's already <laughs> small and she shrunk. And, Speaking and of like, bullying. And Mickey, <laughs> and, Zingbot, and, right? and Mickey, Mickey, this ties into my thing. Mickey is like went right up to her. And you notice how her and Mickey, I think, have a really good relationship, like a really good friendship. And like to have a big, strong guy like that. But because he's won so many HOHs, and I don't know if they can do this, but right when uh, he won that, I was wondering, could he request Nat Nicole's stuff? Could he like request to have Nicole stuff oh, in his room? I see. And no. so then she could oh, get yeah, the. Yeah, that's like, not allowed. If that was allowed. It's just like another letter for Mickey's parents. Like, not, hey, Mickey, we wrote you last week. <laughs> yeah, um, dude. Hope it's all still going well. We don't Here's have some any more letters. Because, <laughs> like, uh, man, I was just like, Here's man, some more if you request that, that would have been huge. All right, I want to end with one question for you, Chalmers. Yeah. Because I feel like you're a really good judge of character. Okay. Does Holly really like Mickey? And does me Mickey really like Holly? Or is this a marriage of convenience? I think they all in that house start as a as a marriage of convenience. I think you find somebody that you click with, and I think it sometimes it's just undeniable that they that it can happen. Uh, with them, by now, usually it can show us a part where they drift apart at times. I believe that 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 they are true. I believe that they are just in from looking at it from the outside. Yeah, I think that she really likes him, and I think that he really likes her. Do you think it will continue outside of the house? <laughs> Straight I, up Julie Chen over so here. I, I think, I think, and this is what I, I think is going to happen is that when he gets outside of the house, he's going to have a whole new fame around him. Yeah. And I believe that is going to be the biggest deterrent to their relationship moving forward. And I believe when he starts, if he doesn't win this thing, if he starts doing the, you know, going to the ranch in Edmonton and then he will be the, there. the national in Calgary, yeah. I believe that's going, and if she, maybe they become a couple duel where they go together. Um, I believe that's going to be a big strain on it. And if he can withstand that, then I don't know. Then maybe it's going to be something else. But that will be the biggest Yeah, I think no thing. chance. No, no chance. chance. Zero so. chance. Why, and why do you say that? Like, what's, the, big, the, what's the biggest reason? I think that, so she dated, she went on like dating shows before. Like she's been on reality shows before, right? Holly okay, has. I didn't. And when I watch them, I'm like, Mickey is a competitor. He's a douchebag in real life. He like beat people up in his fraternity and hospitalized two pledges in his fraternity. I know guys like this. He and Holly are like the ultimate marriage of convenience. And I just feel like when I see them and they're like, you're the best baby. I was like, you could break these two up like this if they weren't locked together in a house. See, and so your knowledge is obviously a little bit more. You've read into the, you've read into his past and stuff. I, I, between the hours of whenever it's on that one hour, that's all I look at. I don't look at Twitter. I don't look at anything. I only see what the producers show me. So I could be easily persuaded to thinking one way, but it's those small looks when they're in the same room together or when they're just like, I don't know, the looks. See, it's all about is, the looks. And, and we're going to close and, and your M check, you're going to get your wish, the podcast's over. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why, John Wars, I ask you questions because you take everything so fucking seriously and that's why it's fun to be your friend for these last 50 fucking years <laughs> and I don't think you cheated in Chumgate for the record. Thank you. Neither and I'm do on I for your the record, side. actually. Thank you. That's it. Let's wrap it. All right, Dusty. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Thanks, Dusty. <laughs> I yeah, can't believe I was a part of Chumgate. This is great. This is great. All right. Should be called Conspiracy Gate. Sorry. <laughs> thanks to Dusty. Thanks to you for listening. Nation Real Life episode 137 is over.